May the Lord bless all of you who are faithful in Christ Jesus. David Williams here with Jesus Ministries and we are talking about God's plan for the nations. Talking about the plan of God. So I'd like us to evaluate this from the most sober perspective possible. Uh, one of the things that the enemy is doing in our day is he is stirring up racial tension. The devil is stirring up racial tension and um, putting it on people's minds to hate each other. Uh, he's putting it on our minds to uh, go back to the sins of our fathers so as to strengthen ourselves so as to find identity and what we don't realize is that there's a forward progress and an expectation that God has on individuals so the word of God says come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you so your salvation is contingent on you or to you coming out contingent on I suppose we'll work with that if that's the right way to say that uh, conditional is contingent I'm going to use that word so your salvation is contingent on you coming out of the world so I was in prayer and I was praying for a particular I suppose I was just praying and I was praying and I saw an image that motivated me to discuss what we're discussing today okay so this racial tension has its root in uh, in, 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 in the days of old the racial tension so we've got the black man and I'm speaking specifically here in, uh, for those of us in the United States of America although if you are in England if you are on the continent of Africa if you're throughout the islands or in any, any other parts of Europe then this or South America this still pertains to you because we've noticed that men are evil we have evil in our hearts and when we are left to ourselves then we're more likely to be manipulated by unclean spirits so the word that says um, a man left to himself will bring his father shame so we know that social division and injustice man that's active in Asia it's active in India it's active throughout China it's active in Tokyo we know that social injustice and subjugation we know that that's active all over the world because men have hate in their hearts men have hate and have hatred so men are governed by hatred and fear and pride and that's a uh, that's a bad mixture of desires you know hatred describes a desire fear describes a desire pride describes a desire lust these are all forms of desire and these destroy so the danger is the destruction that comes from hatred that comes from fear that comes from pride that comes from high-mindedness so uh, the people are going back and forth uh, racially there are things that are rising up uh, racial motivation for this decision or that stance uh, that proclamation people are trying to find trying to protect themselves trying to solidify to secure their identity they're trying to secure their identity we're being tempted by the devil to secure our identity in our ethnicity or in our social prominence we're trying to or the enemy is trying to do that and we're trying to 
um, yield to that. Many of us are trying to yield to that. Many of us have not been delivered from the mentality associated with that, the perspective. And the more, uh, and we know that this is a diabolical scheme of the enemy, the more attention we pay to the popular press, to the modern media, to the news outlets, to the public machine, the more attention we pay to that, the more subjugated we are, the more suppressed, the more controlled, the more programmed we are. We are being programmed to hate and we're being programmed to hate each other, not realizing that the enemy is the devil, the enemy is sin. There are people who call a certain people group the devil, but the, the devil is the enemy. He is a spiritual entity. He runs a kingdom of spiritual entities and they influence man. It requires faith. It requires the awareness of God to understand what it is that I'm referring to. We absolutely will not understand history. We don't understand the workings of man without knowledge concerning these these things, without the knowledge of God concerning racial interaction, racial movements and 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 decision makings by one group of people as opposed to another group of people we we need the spirit of god to explain to us uh what we see uh how we see what we see we need the perspective of god concerning these racial matters concerning these things and specifically the the command to depart or to abandon or to come out from among them. We look at Ruth who was a Moabitess. She was a descendant of the people of Moab and uh, who were essentially Lot's relatives. Lot his one Lot was sexual with his daughter through manipulation. Lot was drunk. Lot was Abraham's nephew. So Abraham had a nephew named Lot and God delivered Lot from Sodom when God set destruction to Sodom and God delivered Lot from Sodom. Lot and his two daughters actually escaped. Lot's wife died in the escape but Lot and his daughters escaped. One of his daughters had an idea to be sexual with their father so that they could promulgate the race so that they could extend and expand their family because it was just the three of them they thought that maybe their father would die without descendants without children without a heritage without a legacy and so in order to protect their legacy which was their father's legacy they got their father drunk and they were sexual with him and I believe that we're doing that today in different ways. I believe that what we're doing is we're trying to protect our legacy and so we don't mind fornicating to protect that legacy. Fornication uh, also describes prostitution. It doesn't simply mean sex out of marriage. Obviously Lot wasn't married to his daughters and so them being sexual with him was a crime, a crime against the Lord and God's order and they were they were okay committing crimes because they were trying to promulgate their racial heritage and 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 again i believe that men are doing that today we're we're okay with committing crimes against the lord in order to promote our race in order to extend our race in order to prosper our race i believe that the spirit of god is warning us from doing that and 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 his plan essentially is to destroy the evildoers and whole races are, are being destroyed and are going to be destroyed and from that God is going to pick and choose we see that even with the nation of Israel though the nation is 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 is, is as numerous as the sand of the sea from that 
God's going to bring a remnant. So from the, the tribe of Judah, from Issachar, from Simeon, from Zebulun, from Naphtali, and you know, from these people, from even Dan, though Dan Dan's group is not listed in the one hundred and forty four thousand that God is going to preserve for as a select group for himself. We know that there are godly people that were rescued from the the nation of Dan or the tribe of Dan, the empire of Dan, from the, the empire of Zebulun and Naphtali. And I call them empires because they didn't just govern themselves at different heights of their power. They governed other nations. And so God gave nations to Israel to govern at various points in their history. And so many times we like to resort back to that or look back to that. We like to refer back to that uh, for stability or for security or to strengthen ourselves and our feelings about ourselves to our destruction. God's plan is to destroy the nations. That's what his plan is. The plan is to destroy the nations uh, because they're, they're, they're not saved. They, the Bible says the wicked will be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And so holistically the nations have forgotten God and they don't love the Lord. Uh, from the nations, he's calling a remnant. From the nations, he's calling a people. From the nations, he's not calling a people that are going to uh, prioritize their heritage. He's not calling a nation that's going to prior think that they're special because of their ethnicity or because of where they're from. You'll notice that there is no place given. There's no special treatment uh, given. There's no blessing on cultural pride in that manner. There's no, uh, the Lord is not prospering the sons and daughters who are focused on what, on, on what they are ethnically. That is absolutely not the will of God. You know, when many times a people are suppressed in order to feel good about themselves they or in order to overcome that discouragement they'll stand up and they'll say no you know we are a people recognize us you know it's essentially for attention and recognition they rise up and say no we're a people you know you're going to respect us you're going to uh, protect us many of the people of God have gotten led astray have been you know swayed uh, away uh, from the, 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 the simplicity of the gospel. They've gotten into civil matters. And, and we talk about, man, you know, no. You know, the black man needs protection. You know, um, the white man needs promotion. When in actuality, the black man is on his way to hell. The white man is damned and condemned. The Lord is calling white people out of white peopleness. And he's calling the black man out of the black life. He's calling the Chinese man from his Asian descent. And he's making him new. He's making the white man. He's making the Indian new. He's making the guy from Guinea new. And Guam. He's making the people from Guam new. He's making the guys who live in the Himalayas. He's making them new. He's not satisfied with these heritages. He's not satisfied with these works. He's not satisfied with these racial divisions and tensions. They really uh, demean and 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 uh, they really demean the, the things of God then the truth of God and the purposes of God Paul describes not knowing any man after the flesh and 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 you'll see that you'll notice that Jesus Christ even um uh, he was of the line of David but yet David uh, had a son named Solomon who had a son named Rehoboam and Rehoboam I mean he had kids from women that were not Jews. I mean, Jesus had Gentiles in his heritage, yet he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yet we've got Rahab, who is a Gentile prostitute, who was a Gentile prostitute, and the Lord engrafted her and he brought her in. He made her a part of the family line of God. And, and then we, you know, we've got Ruth, who I mentioned already. She was a Moabitess, the descendants of fornication, the Moabites and the Ammonites, 
are descendants of fornication. Uh, someone trying to protect their race, someone trying to protect their identity, and they committed fornication and had a whole people group out of that fornication. They were the cursed of the Lord. The Moabites were the cursed of the Lord. The Lord did away with them as a people. The Ammonites, they were the cursed of the Lord. The Philistines, they were the cursed of the Lord. These different people groups. God is not saving whole people groups. He's saving people. He's saving people. He's saving a remnant of the people of Judah, a remnant of the people of Israel. He's saving a remnant. He's not saving whole people groups. And whenever we start getting caught up in whole people group heritage, that's when we sin and go back to the idols of our fathers, the witchcrafts of our fathers, the doubts and the unbelief of our fathers, the disciplines and vain traditions of our fathers. The Lord has purposed destruction on the land. He's decided to do away with the ungodly. He's decided to do away with the wicked. And, and so the people have to repent of that. Uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6 that contingent upon receiving, like in order to be, in order to receive the gospel, your Ex your salvation you cannot be saved unless you come out from among them Jesus made this shockingly clear in Matthew chapter 12 who is my mother who is my brothers who are my brothers who are my siblings who are the siblings of the Lord who are siblings? What family do you identify with? You have to ask yourself that in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. You have to ask yourself, who do you identify with? Who do you identify with? What is it about your identity that you value? Do you value the fact that you're black? Do you value your identity as a white person or as Latino? Do you value that? God plans on destroying all of that. He's calling people. He's rapturing people. He's recognizing people like Abraham. Hey, you. You have I seen. I, I saw you, Abraham. Hey, Noah. I saw you. I'm going to wipe out all your brothers and all of your sisters. Think about this. 100% of Noah's brothers, 100% of his family, with the exception of his three sons, his wife, his daughters-in-law, and his sons. Noah, Noah's wife, Noah's three sons, and Noah's daughters-in-law. God wiped out Noah's dad. He wiped out Noah's mom. He wiped out Noah's cousins. He took them all away. As he saw fit, he took them all away. He took out the whole city of Sodom, the whole city of Gomorrah. He took them all away. He's not satisfied, nor is God impressed with the nations. To him, they're a drop of a bucket. He took them out. He wiped them out. He took them from away from the. He took them away from the earth. He's wiping the nations out. He's selecting people. He's selecting people. A lot of people are going to die. They have, and they're going to in the coming days. A lot of people are going to be just taken away. Who are you? Who are you? You have to ask yourself, who are you? Who you identify as is going to determine where you're going to where you're going to end up. Who you identify, what you identify as. Do you identify as a civilian? Are you just a regular person? How many people have been led astray? How many ministers of the gospel have been polluted because of their political perspectives? How many sons of God who were preaching salvation from what? From the identity of the world. From the identity of the flesh. How many people have been led astray, led away with the wicked because they were trying to 
fight for their rights and their recognition. They're trying to fight for recognition. You've got to understand the plan of God on the nations because if we don't understand the plan of God for the nations, then we're going to be among the nations when he does bad things to the nations. I don't know if you classify as Russian. I mean, that might be what you are biologically. So yes, there are certain benefits that you're going to have. When Paul found himself in a difficult situation, he needed to appeal to his legal status as a Roman. Yet he didn't do that essentially because he prided himself in being Roman. He stated this in Philippians. Yes, I'm a Jew. But I count that poop. I count it manure. I consider my Jewish heritage dung. Can I ask you this? Do you consider your African heritage to be poop? Do you consider your European, your European or Irish heritage as poop? Do you consider your Puerto Rican heritage as dung? When you think back and you say, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Do you think that that's poop? Do you think that? Like when you think back to where you're from, Cincinnati, do you think back to where you're from, uh, Dayton, do you think back to where you're from and say, man, that's poop. I think about my yesterday like poop. D do you think about that? Um, give me a second. Uh, so, Oh, Brother Corey, just to quickly answer your question, the 144,000, he does not reinstate the law of Moses, but there are certain uh, standards that he's going to reestablish, but it's not. So the law of Moses did, con did entail or include certain things God does want to do in the next phase of existence, but no, he does not re. Um, so that word commandment there where it says here is the patience of the saints and here they that keep the commands of God it just simply means the things God expects the standards of God the, the law of God not the old covenant law because everything that Jesus says is the command of God so no that is not a reinstatement of the law of Moses and just add that in there Paul says I consider my status as a black American as a Latino American, as a Mexican. I, I do what I need to do while I'm doing what I'm doing, but I do not bring that into the equation concerning my identity. I do not bring into the equation my heritage, I, my, 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 my melanin, the texture of my hair. I do not bring into the equation my status as a as a whatever I am physically or I'm South African or South American I'm from we don't bring that into the equation you absolutely if you identify with what you are biologically then you are hindering what you are spiritually because there's identity there's there's pride there's 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 a curse let me just say it this way there's a curse on what you are bodily. There's a curse on your blackness, whiteness, Asianness. There's a curse on that. The curse is death. Please understand that there's a curse. And that death is going to manifest in a variety of ways. There are things that God's going to bring on whole people groups. There's a curse on your life as a physical person who lives just in, under the physical laws and physical expectations and prides and priorities and and that self identification like where you say I'm this that it's that, a curse on the black people on the Indian people on the Native American Indian people the Native Americans is a curse on the people and when, when David aligns himself with that because the real essence the essential question is have you been born again I know you were born but have you been reborn have you been born again if you've been born again then there are some things that we're forgetting 
We're, for, we're forgetting the things that are behind. I don't know. The, the sons of God are going to understand this. I'm not sure if all of you are going to yield to this or accept this, but there's a curse on your life that you uh, are, are undergoing, that you're going to subject, that you're subjecting, that we are subjecting ourselves to. There's a curse on the life of the rebel. And all of the nations are rebels. The, the nation, the world, I know a lot, I know, not a lot, I know some very significant people who have given themselves over to lust. They've given themselves over to lust. Me and a friend were um, coming from an area uh, in western Florida and uh, as we were coming from this area we had stopped by uh, this restaurant and as we entered the restaurant there were certain people who didn't necessarily look friendly but I wasn't there to make friends I was there to eat I wasn't in this restaurant to make friends I went in I went into that restaurant to eat and so I go into the restaurant and I saw that certain people were not as pleased to have me and my other brown colored friend in there and I and I and I said hey man let's get this menu let's get this menu and so I look at the menu and my friend I could tell he could, was a little uncomfortable and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with him because both of us are hungry both of us are hungry like hey man let's hurry up and order we've got to get back home let's order and so he's making all kinds of suggestions that have nothing to do with what we're about to eat we're trying to figure something else out. The person comes to us, asks us what we want. I said, ma'am, give us a moment, or sir, give us a moment. And I'm trying to figure out what is taking you so long. And he's like, oh, you know, we could go to someplace else. You know, we could drive a little further. And I'm trying to figure out, man, what is wrong with you? And so I said, you know what, fine. This guy is so antsy or whatever he is, anxious or like, what's, what's yeah, man, let's go. So I walk out of the place like, man, what's wrong with you, man? I'm hungry. This is the barbecue place. What's the matter? He said, man, you didn't see how people were looking at us in there? I said, what are you talking about? He says, man, that was like a white people spot. Like, the ribs are red and they go into my stomach and I like them. Like, I was in there for the ribs, brother. What are you talking about? I went in there for the ribs. I didn't go in there for the guy with the mustache and the glasses and the beady blue eyes. I don't care what he does not like as I sit here and eat these ribs. Like, what's the problem? Aren't we here for the ribs? I'm not here for this guy. Do you guys serve ribs? I'm here for them. Here's some cash. Give them to me so I can eat them and be on my merry way. I don't care where we are, man. We don't, don't you know where we are? I know that I'm hungry, and if that guy doesn't want me here eating these ribs, then he needs to live. He leave. He needs to leave. If you don't want me, sir, ma'am, if you don't like the fact that I'm eating these ribs, you can leave because I'm going to eat these ribs. And so I had to leave, man. I had to leave because of the racial pressure that I was receiving from my friend but that guy didn't like you that is his sinful problem that's that guy's problem I'm gonna eat these ribs if I can this guy's not gonna let me eat these ribs so he couldn't even order them I left frustrated ma'am I'm sorry we have to go you know what I mean um, let's find another place oh goodness now we gotta find some place that doesn't sell ribs which is what we had to do eventually so, we find ourselves prisoners. We find ourselves slaves. We find ourselves in bondage. You know, there are all kinds of generational curses on what you are as a Brazilian. All kinds of curses on what you are as a Caucasoid or whatever they call you. I don't know what they call you. I don't know what you call you. There are all kinds of things that your people have done that have the wrath of God hanging over the heads of the people. 
There are all kinds of darknesses that are waiting to stream in to your life and onto your kids. All kinds of darkness that are like hanging over your head and that are like aimed directly at you. The devil has what you call uh, the crosshairs. You know, like that thing that's got the thing with the line and the, and, the, and, the, and the cross thing to, you know, the devil's got you in the crosshairs. He's got you in the scope, sniper scope. The devil's got people in the scope. And he's waiting for people to come across his path. And, and when you and I stand up, what are you about to say, David? When you and I set our minds on civil matters, then we are entering the crosshairs of Satan. I am not making suggestions. I'm not making assertions. I am telling you what the Word of God reveals repetitively. I am telling you that the Lord plans on destroying the nations. Please understand that. There are certain sins of your people whether you're the descendant of the Aztecs, the, the Mayas, Mayans, the Lord, I'm telling you, so the devil, so there's certain things your people deserve. If you classify as one of those people outside of the absolute legal expectations, David, where are you from? I'm from this place. Why did, why did you write that down? Well, you made me. You asked me the color of my skin and I told you it was brown. But you didn't have that on the list, so I chose the closest thing based on your classification. And so I wrote black. And that's just to get this blue piece of this blue booklet so I can travel all over the globe. You know, you want you want me to travel. I, I need to travel so I can spend some money as we preach this gospel. So I took the, I put brown. I put brown on there. Or black, or whatever you put, whatever you let me put on there, I put on there. I don't ethnically identify with that. I am brand new. I'm brand new. I am brand new. We don't even know Jesus after the flesh. I wonder if Jesus was black. I wonder if Jesus was God. I wonder if Jesus was God. Do you think Jesus was black? Well, I know he was God. So, do you think the Jews are black? Hmm. I know that there's a curse of having killed Jesus on their lives. Whether they were black or not, I know they were cursed. I know they're blessed because God's going to bring the Savior of the world through them, and He did. And I know that they're cursed. I know that when they walk in their flesh, they're cursed. And when they walk in the Spirit, they're blessed. So I know that. Are you white? Well, I know I'm blessed. Are you black? Hmm. I'm not sure. But I do know that I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to spend forever with God. I know I have plans to spend forever with God. And so if I call myself white or black or Spanish, then I might be attracting the curse and the, gen the generational curses, the, 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 the principalities, the big governing demon spirits. I might be attracting them onto myself and onto my seed after me. I believe the word of God when it says come out from among them and be separate and don't touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. What did Ruth the Moabite say to Naomi the Jewess, the Jew? Ruth said to Naomi, I am going where you go. Uh, your God, your people, she was renouncing her citizenship, her ethnic identity, and she got to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Rahab had to do essentially the exact same thing. The two women, excluding Tamar, the, um, I don't know where Tamar was from, but excluding Tamar, I don't remember where she's from, but Ruth, Rahab the prostitute, and Ruth the descendant of incest and just like evil you know just heretical evil that's wrong to have to get your dad drunk and have sex with him that's wrong just so you know that's don't do that so Ruth that's her heritage that was her heritage 
like ancestral sin ancestral sin ancestral new word maybe sin like sin so she had that on her life she had that on her life Ruth had that on her life the people of Jericho were Canaanites the curse of the Lord was on their lives kill all of the people of Jericho kill all of the people of Ai kill all of the people of Bethel kill all of the people who live in this area wipe them out don't marry them don't eat with them don't be friends with them kill all of them kill all that's what that was the plan of God for the people of Canaan please understand what I'm telling you right now that was the plan of God for the people who lived in that area hey you come here kill everybody who lives there everybody man woman child kill all of them don't don't stop until they're all dead wow God yes but what about this lady well you know she hid you guys as spies she hid y'all she hid you guys hey come here um I the lady Rahab said I know that you guys serve the living God and everybody here they're afraid of your God they heard what your God did to the people of Egypt and they are extremely afraid and they heard of what your God did to the king of uh, Sihon king of the Amorites and Og the king of Bashan those two giant kings like physically giant guys at least one of the guys were were and they we've heard and we heard how your God like he he parted the Jordan River we, there's no courage in us to fight you guys but I, I'm I hid you two spies because I don't want to die I don't want my dad to die I don't want my sisters my, my family to die how can I can you please protect me because I protected you lady because you protected us we will protect you because you protected us we will protect you and so but put this red cord the red cord represented the blood of Jesus come on let's go with that for a second let's put the red cord in the window so when we come to wake out everybody we will protect you we'll protect everybody you let into this house and do you think she could just become a part of the family of Israel and still live as a Canaanite from Jericho absolutely not okay lady if you want to be in this family you've got to marry in you've got to live you got to renounce all your heritage all your God now your complexion won't change we're not asking you to change your complexion can the Ethiopian change his skin no he can't so we're not asking you to change your complexion we're asking you to renounce 100 percent of your heritage that conflicts and contradicts with the, the will of God for your life right now and she okay whatever I have to do and she marries Salmon and she has a son who's now she okay, she married she she has a son and you know what her son's name is her son give me a second before I don't want to say that I know it's right but I want to check it I think it's right I'm almost sure it's right and Rahab the harlot is given a son by the Lord she marries this guy uh, Salmon and you know what her son's name was Rahab's sons Rahab's son was Boaz this guy that all of the females talk about I want Boaz well guess what his mother was a prostitute a former prostitute a Canaanite prostitute a Canaanite prostitute this guy's mom was a Canaanite prostitute and she had to renounce her way and her ethnicity and God gave her Boaz as her son a man of honor a man of justice a man of love a man of productivity Boaz was her son she got adopted in and God gave her Boaz and you know who Boaz's wife was Ruth who was from another family group and she renounced her family group to be in the line of Jesus she renounced her family group your people will be my people your God will be my God where you go I'll go if anything God do so to me and more also if anything but death separate us and that was how she got in how do I get in you have to renounce your heritage don't think I'm playing with you 
Don't think God is playing with you. You have to renounce your heritage. You have to renounce your whiteness. You have to renounce your blackness. You have to renounce all of that. Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. And if when I've got to be black, in order to get some place, I'll be that. And when I've got to be American to get some place, I'll be that. And when I've got to be rich to get some place, I'll be that. And when I've got to be poor to get some place, I'll be that. Whatever I've got to be to get to what I, where I've got to go, that I might win some. That's that's it right there. And so you've got to, we, we, we've got to understand that. We've got to just really get to the place where we understand that, hey, listen, man. If I don't accept, if God doesn't just pull out. If God doesn't pull you and I out, that's it. So that's true. But I mean, it, it, Christ is bringing the Gentiles in. As the Gentiles renounce everything associating themselves with that. You know, the Holy Ghost, he's, Jesus is got Jewish line. He, all the lines are in that blood. Well, Paul said it in a different way. God has made of the earth, God made the earth of one blood. Man, man has single blood. Yes, it makes you brown, it makes you peach, it makes you yellowish, it makes you blackish, it makes you bluish. Yeah, the blood, it'll, it'll diversify as to what it'll do. But all that's associated with it, those differences and those, you know, small idiosyncrasies, the Lord's going to do away with that. Like, hey, yeah, if he's going to save, he's going to save, he's going to redeem, he's going to transform. The people were of one language, one man, one woman did all of this. The Lord took a single man, and from him he took a woman, and then brought them together, and then he promulgated the race. And he's bringing it back full circle. The divisions, the tensions. You know what the devil likes to do? This guy right here is a, a bad person, but he was killed by those bad people. And then the devil likes to show you that trying to get you to identify with this bad guy as opposed to that bad guy. You know what? This young kid got shot by these people. This is the world. This is the world. This is what's happening all over the world. This guy got shot by that group. So which which side are you on? Are you are well based on your color or a social class you could associate with that group or based on your political perspectives you could associate with this group and you have to back up and say I'm not on your side just because you complexion you look like me as far as my complexion ethnically we have something physically in common I was on my way to hell, living based on my physical status. I was cursed. The curse of the Lord was on my life when I was living like that. When I was living based on that, the wrath of God was against me. It was a trap. I'm not going to associate with you. And politically speaking, I'm not going to associate with you. Yes, you're the guys that protect the streets sometimes. I'm not going to associate with you because of that. I respect you because of your role, and I pray for your salvation. Because if you don't get saved, you're not going to come out from among the group that you're in. And you're going to die in rebellion. And you, if you guys don't get saved, you're going to die in sin. I'm not on your side. I'm not on your side. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm not on your side. Who's on the Lord's side? That's what. No, I'm ending when I say this. Moses asked the people after they were worshiping the idols of Egypt, while they were in the wilderness. Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? And the Levites came to him. And you know what he then said? If you're on the Lord's side, kill your brothers. Let me read that to you. And just, just so you don't think David's a liar. Because that's in Exodus 32, I think. Or 30 something. Let's see. Uh... Let's see, that's, uh, that's um, Exodus 32, and uh, let's see, um, that's that right there, I think we said that, maybe that's there, I don't remember where it is, 
I think it's Exodus. Yep, Exodus 32, verse 26. Exodus 32, 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay or kill every man his brother, and every man his companion or friend, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell or died of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow, bestow upon you a blessing this day. He's saying, Listen, kill your brothers, kill your kids, kill your neighbors, or God's not going to bless you. Like, what? What did this guy just preach on the Facebook Live? I am going to flag this guy's video as inappropriate. Flag! The guy is calling for graphic content. He's calling. He just read. You can't flag. You just... You... Kill your brothers whether they are black or white. He said, are you holy? Then kill your brothers. Are you righteous before God? Are you on his side? Kill your brothers. Now praise Jesus. This We're under the new covenant. The new covenant says, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my descendants, and I'll be your God. I come out from, don't say you're this, don't identify with that. We, when you use the phrase we, talk about you and your brothers in the spirit. If you think about temporal things, you will be living a temporary life. Meaning, when the Lord eradicates everything, you will be among the firewood he burns. If you want to associate with a temporary status, your status is going to be temporary. If you want to associate with an eternal status, your status will be eternal. It's as simple as life or death. The Lord presents to us this day life and blessing or death and cursing. Choose life so you and your children will live. Don't teach your kids history from the perspective of the ethnic clashes, social clashes of the past. Teach them the perspective of the righteous versus the unrighteous and what God's plan is for the righteous as opposed to the wicked. Show them, see what God did to the Native Americans because of their worshipping of devils. Look what God did to the black people because of their worshipping of devils. Look what God did to the Romans. Look what God did to the Europeans because they worshipped devils. Look how God kept those people there because God was their source. Look how God blessed that group right there of people who departed from their own people who were trying to kill them for their faith in Jesus. When you comb through history, you better not do it as a white man, a black man, a Chinese man, a Native American, or Indian. Hey, you know, we, we, we who? We who? Who are we? Who are you? Like, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Like, oh, I'm this. I'm black first. Well, you'll be black last. If you're black first, you'll be black last. Black as in burned in the fire with your own special worms assigned to you and your worm is not going to die nor will the fire be quenched and if you're white you'll be black last you're going to hell I hate to break it to you you're going to hell like you're going to hell like people are going to hell you're going to hell people are going to hell people are going to hell white or eventually we're all going to be white not no, eventually we're all going to be white 
purified white as snow in the spirit, white heads, brass feet, you know, like so eyes red like a flame of fire, made like Jesus, new brand new bodies, not segregated, and if and when and, and, and the dis there are going to be distinctions, but it's not going to be based on this stuff here, not based on this stuff right here. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? That's going to, det going to determine whether you're blessed or cursed. That's going to determine. So when you walk outside, you don't do it as a black man, a white man, a Chinese man, an Asian man. You do it as a Christian. A Christian. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him be happy. But if you suffer because you're black, or because you're white, or because you're American, or because you're from the islands, like, don't, like, pray off, pray that off of you. Lord, deliver me from all of the curses in my life because of my complexion and because of my social status. Let me have the maneuverability of a son of God. I don't want the limitation of my ethnic group. So I renounce it in Jesus' name. I renounce where I'm from. I renounce what I am in the flesh. Don't know me after the flesh. I will not associate with that thing there. So that does not identify or characterize or limit me. I know what that's doing. That's trying to limit me. I already know what it's doing. It's trying to keep me in bondage to death, which is hanging over the lives of the people. I already know what it's doing. It's out to kill me. Are you black? Uh, do you hate me? Why would I? Because, no, I'm Christian. Like, I'm born again. No, but I mean, I know what you mean. I'm born again. I'm born again. I mean, my complexion is brown. If that's what you're asking, I mean, you do, you, have, you, you know, yeah, of course I'm brown. Like, I'm brown skinned. Oh, yeah. Where are you from? Uh, New Jerusalem. Wait, where is that? In Revelation chapter 22 and 21. No, man. I'm, no, I'm saved. I'm saved. Work that into the con conversation. Work that into the conversation. Like, yeah, man, listen. Man, I don't associate it. I don't associate this stuff, uh, you know, the whole black stuff, man. I don't play that game. Tell people you don't play that game. Like, yeah, man. That whole white black stuff, man. Nah, man. That's the world. I don't do that. I've come out from among them. I've come out from among them. Like, whatever I am in the flesh, I, I don't identify with that. There are two kinds of people in the world. The saved and the unsaved. And they come in all shapes, sizes, social classes, and complexions. Two kinds of people. Those who are going to spend forever with God and those who are going to spend forever away from him. That's it. That's it. God is not going to be kinder to the black or, par or, or partial to the white. If you're Jew, you better get saved. If you're Gentile, you better commit. Because God's plan is active. He's going to bring all the nations down to judge them. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who do you classify as? So we strive not to recognize people after the flesh. We strive not to, because we don't want to give Satan authority over us. So we don't do that. Because the Lord has judged. At that death on the cross, he showed you his plan for the flesh. Hey man, this is what I'm going to do. Are you ready for that? No, Lord. Well then, you better repent. Take my death on your behalf. If you want to walk in the flesh and identify according to the flesh, then what you saw at that cross it will be your eternity. Crucifixion. Who wants that? Jesus was put to death in the flesh but quickened in the spirit. First Adam was a living soul. The last Adam was a quickening spirit.
That's you and I by the Spirit. I love you all. Be prayerful about this matter. Divest yourself of all of those other things. Separate yourself from that and he will receive you. This is David Williams and God willing we will talk again.